Welcome back to the channel, Hosers. Back to Tactical coming to you with a heavy heart today. On Friday, up here in Canada, our <laughs> Justin Trudeau declared an order in council that all military assault rifles be banned. And um, didn't really have a definition when asked what military assault rifle means because it's not defined in any criminal code or anywhere. He arbitrarily picked bolt action rifles, ARs, Ruger Mini 14s, CZs. Uh, there's some rim fires there. There's grenade launchers, which were always prohibited in Canada. Um, couldn't give an explanation as to why. It's pretty disgusting. Just completely bypassed all due process and, uh, you know, did it at a time when we're all stuck inside during a pandemic and nobody could really get out and and voice their concerns nobody could vote on it nobody could argue it uh, you know a dictator move by <laughs> and uh, it's pretty disgusting much like what you see is happening in virginia in the in the united states uh, at least the united states have more people involved and it's written into your constitution whereas in canada you know, across the country, we really only have about 2 million, 2.2 million gun owners, uh, sorry, licensed gun owners. And, uh, you know, the sad, sad reality is a lot of the people up here in Canada who aren't affected, you know, I don't have an AR type attitude, so they don't care. But it's just the start. He's already said handguns are next. And, and quite frankly, I'm surprised he wouldn't include handguns. I mean, handguns are predominantly used in every violent crime. You know, he, he wanted to springboard the tragedy that happened in Nova Scotia when everyone's emotions are high. But he fails to, to mention that this guy was barred from owning any type of firearm when he applied for his license in 2002. And not only did he get a license, but he actually also bought a police car from the RCMP at an auction and used that. So... You know, the the process works up here in Canada. We have some of the most strict gun laws. We have very, very specific and limited ability to discharge our our firearms. We have to be in an approved range. We have to be approved distances. We need permits to transport. Everything has to be locked three times over. Ammunition stored separately. <coughs> to go after legal gun owners instead of criminals. Heaven forbid he fight gangsters and the illegal smuggling of guns when he can come after uh, the legal gun owners who've registered everything. I, I kind of equate it to, you know, if you're in a major city and there's a rat problem and uh, the, the mayor of the city says, I'm going to take care of this rat problem by killing all the rats that are in a pet store. It, it's disgusting and, uh, you know, it lacks due process and... And I really did never thought I would see this in Canada, if I'm being honest, but. A few organizations fighting for us. And uh, hopefully we can win it. My plan here is uh, I'm not going to eat these ketchup chips or this coffee crisp. Specific to Canada. You can't get these in the United States. I'm not going to eat these until this gun ban is removed. It's going to be a trust, trust me guys, it's going to be a struggle for me, but uh, I'm not going to. And when we finally come through with this, hopefully uh, conservative governments get in and repeal this, I'm going to set off my red smoke bomb. Uh, not sure which one this is, but it's going to give a lot of red smoke to show that I'm Canadian and I'm, I'm happy. Uh, so for the time being, we have to lock up our, our firearms. And, and uh, this is the beauty of it, guys, up in the uh, United States and those Canadians who don't know. He placed a ban stating that we can't transport our firearms anywhere, can't shoot them even if we have our own land, and we also cannot sell them. So for two years, we have to hold these firearms in our safe, which is making Canada safer, by the way, because they're still in our possession. But somehow that's making Canada safer. So we have to hold these, these firearms for two years, at which point he'll decide if he wants to buy them back at the market value they dictate, uh, which, you know, has been no information so far, or he'll let us keep them and grandfather us, which could mean we're allowed to keep them, but again, not allowed to transport them or use them. So essentially uh, becoming paperweights, 
or we can turn them in and give them to the state. So, uh, I mean, it's a win-win for Canada, right? It's either we take Canadian taxpayer money to buy back guns that were legally purchased, or they get them for free, and who knows what they'll do with them. Maybe they'll sell them to Cuba. Uh, I have no clue. But anyways, that's enough of a rant, guys. Let's dive into one of the few black rifles. Uh, that wasn't that uh, wasn't on the ban list, so to speak. It's a 22 bolt action. This is the Ruger Precision chambered in 22 long rifle, and uh, beautiful little rifle. The little brother of the Ruger Precision that comes with a folding stock, and uh, obviously much bigger rounds. I believe they come in six and a half Creedmoor 308. I've seen them in 300 Win Mag. And uh, there might be a couple more variants, uh, but that one has a folding stock, whereas this one is just strictly collapsible. So this one, you could see it has a quick throw lever here. So you loosen that. This goes up and down and it goes back and forth. So you can move it any which way you want. And uh, nice little system. Uh, this, why isn't this moving? I have to loosen it. So it's a nice, nice system where you can get a good cheek weld and... Then you just tie it down and you're good to go. So it's a bolt action that takes the same 1022 magazines as the uh, the 1022 series and the Ruger, I believe they call it the American, the Ruger American um, in 22. So uh, the good thing is you can use these magazines between the different platforms. As you can see, I have a 1022 there that I'm going to show you just to compare. Uh, but beautiful, beautiful uh, aluminum chassis. Very nice. It has an M-Lock foreguard, which is beauty. A uh, heavy barrel. So you can see you can attach your any attachment that you want here. As you see, I have a Magpul uh, uh, angled foregrip here. This one allows you to really just get a grip and pull it into your shoulder. Uh, I like this for shooting offhand. Uh, when I'm shooting off a rent, uh, bench or a rest, I usually just put this, this bipod. This is a QD but bipod. As you can see, it has the uh, the quick, and this is a GG and G. You know, it's about two hundred bucks. Um, it's okay. It, it serves its purpose. It's nice. You know, it's got adjustability. Um, I really probably should have just spent a little bit more and went with the Atlas, uh, the Atlas series. Um, this was all that was available, and it was you know cheaper, and it had the QD, and I was like, oh, I really like that. Uh, but you know, in hindsight, I think I really should have just went with the Atlas, um, the series, you know, it's like 75 to hundred bucks more. I think I would have, would have enjoyed that. So live and learn. I'll, I'll do that next time. Uh, I like this because sometimes I'll throw this on my AR and, uh, won't be throwing it on anytime soon, but nevertheless, you can throw it on your AR. So I threw a, a little flash hider here. This is just a strike industry. It's nothing special. I think it's just a, yeah, like a three, four prong flash hider. It serves its purpose. It's a 22. I mean, you're not going to get uh, much effectiveness out of that, right? Um, so going to the rear, you see it has a nice Ruger grip that, you know, it's a nice little pistol grip here that really incorporates a beaver tail. And you can get right up in there. And I like to shoot with, uh, you know, my support hand underneath. And I, I find I could get really up in there. So I really like that. The rear of the stock has a Picatinny, uh, as you can see here. If you wanted to put a stake, uh, here, let me, I'm not even in frame. So if you wanted to put like a stake, uh, one of those spikes to, to, instead of a rear rest, a rear bag rest, you can put a little spike there. Uh, nice touch. I've never tried it. I uh, don't, don't really need to. Um, again, the cheek riser is adjustable. You know, it's not as adjustable as, say, the um, as the Ruger Precision, the big brother. But you can see you, you've got quite a bit of length of pull there. Like, look how much you've got, right? So, I mean, you should be able to find something comfortable here. And especially since it's a 22, it's not much recoil to deal with. And then the cheek rise is perfect just to get a nice weld with uh, with lining it up on the scope. So the trigger is actually really good considering it's just a little rimfire. I, I was actually surprised with this trigger. It has that little dingus in the middle. Don't know if that's a safety or what, but you know, it, um, it's actually a really crisp trigger. So empty, as you can see. And you depress that little lever and then you there's no wall. You just go. 
And honestly, guys, I think that's like two, three pounds because it's really light and there's no creep. The creep is in the little dingus. Um, I think that's called a dingus. I think that's a scientific term. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is. So a uh, great trigger considering, you know, it's a $500 rifle with a heavy barrel and an aluminum chassis. So beauty. Uh, the bolt has a, f a feature which is actually pretty intuitive. Uh, I'm surprised they did this on such a, 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 a low price rifle. Uh, so you see right there, that little piece of steel indent, you can actually put an insert there. And what it'll do is it'll reduce the pull. So right now this is set up for a regular short, um, a regular action, uh, which would mimic a 308. So you, you see how far back I go? That, that would be the same length as a 308 round. Whereas if you put that little uh, piece of steel insert in, what happens is it stops there, so it's just enough for the 22 long rifle. So it gives you a shorter pull. So you're you're stopping there rather than all the way back. So the idea is this is obviously a trainer. Uh, you train on 22 to get your trigger pull, your breathing, uh, keep your expenses down. You you train with the the you know the cheaper cheaper round, and the idea is that this platform is identical to the Big Brother, so that when it comes time for competition or actual you know, uh, where pinpoint accuracy counts, then you've, you've, you've got the muscle memory down, right? It's just, you know, it's the same pull. So nice touch, really like that. The gun does have a, oops, the gun does have a safety, just like an AR. So you can see that it has a um, safe fire. You know, it actuates nicely. I've never used it. Um, I, I don't know if maybe if you need that for some sort of competition, but uh, I mean, this, this is more of a, a plinker that a, I shoot from a rest. Uh, sometimes I'll shoot standing, but never, never had to use it. But uh, it's there. Uh, it comes incorporated with a 20 MOA rail, which is a nice touch because, um, again, you're supposed to be training with this, and you want to reach out and, and get some good distance. So you need the elevation. So the 20 MOA is going to add a little bit of rise, and that way you can really stretch the adjustments of the scope for further longer ranges. So nice touch. Uh, incorporated I believe it's uh, I think it's just a Ruger brand but uh, it's a nice touch it's there uh, you don't have to buy it separately so I should mention though the the attachment point here for the bipod was uh, an M lock Picatinny that I had to pay out of pocket so it does not come with that so be cautious guys if you buy it there is nothing no attachment points up front it's all M lock you will need to buy the adapter the only attachment point I see here is incorporated on the stock, and uh, I'm no, that's not even a, that's not even an attachment point. So never mind, there are no attachment points. So pretty, uh, pretty decent gun, uh, especially for the price. I've got on it a Bushnell Engage three to twelve with uh, locking turrets, so you push up. Resettable zero, so you can uh, unscrew the top. So how uh, the the nice feature is uh, you, you set it, you unscrew the top, and then you just pull the cap out, and then you put it at zero, and then you put this back in, and then you and then that becomes your zero. So you know where to go. It has an adjustable parallax, which is a nice touch. Um, I believe it goes all the way from 15, um, 15 yards to infinity. So the idea is if you sight the scope at 100 yards, you, you set your parallax for 100. If you start shooting 15 or 20 yards, um, you're behind the scope, but you're not actually seeing it properly. So there's going to be a little bit of variation there. So you, you dial down that uh, adjustable parallax, and then it's it's like it's it's set so that what you're seeing is actually where it is on the target. So uh, that that's one of the, the things that drew me to this scope because... At our range, indoor range, it's only 25 to 50. And I'd like to be able to stretch it out to 100 when I go outdoors. So for that reason, I needed something with uh, with the AO. The, uh, sorry, the ad adjustable objective. I believe it's a 30 millimeter tube and a 40 objective. I, I, I don't know the specs. I bought this a long time ago. Um, the reticle itself, I'm not even going to try to show you because I know it won't pick up, is very faint. That's the one knock against this this scope is the reticle is is really tough to see. It's it's not bad outdoors uh, when it's nice and bright, but indoors it's it's a, it's a challenge. 
It's a second focal plane, obviously, uh, you know, being a budget scope. But it's a little bit challenging, and the crosshairs are very fine. So fine that it's hard to differentiate, you know, one from the next. So if you were going to be stretching this past 100, it would be tough. Um, it would be tough because uh, your holdovers are going to be hard to pick up, especially if you're doing any sort of competition where you need to pick those those holdovers up quickly. So uh, I'd stay away from that if, if you're doing serious shooting. Uh, maybe go with the, I believe, the Forge or the Nitro or just the, the lines above. Um, I haven't used them, so I can't speak to them. But this one is just, it's adequate. It's, I wouldn't uh, recommend it for, for serious shooting uh, or competition, obviously. So in my last video, I showed you guys these little trick snap caps drywall anchors the smallest ones you can get yellow 50 of them i paid a few bucks for this and you get these snap caps that fit and function perfectly like a 22 and uh you can see that they load nicely this does have a little bit of a magwell nothing too crazy but you know it's it's there so it goes in and let's see if it's gonna work or if it's gonna make a liar out of me so See that? It popped out. Next round in. Dry fire. Popped out. Perfect. Save yourself money, guys. Don't buy snap caps for 22. Use these drywall plugs. More times than not, they come out perfect and you could reuse them. So save your money. Don't waste it on, uh, on snap caps. If you're the type of person who doesn't like dry firing a, a rim fire. Me personally, I don't care. Um, the firing pin's an easy job, so I change it, no problem. So this is pretty much the, the 22 Precision in a, in a nutshell. It comes in 17 HMR and 22 WMR. Uh, those ones use a different mag. It's, it's a little bit bigger, obviously, and it holds 9 rounds, whereas these ones hold 10. So um, that's the Precision. And I'm just going to show you in comparison. This is just a regular 1022. So this is obviously the semi-automatic version and um you know this one is it's it's shorter uh, the barrel profile is is obviously thinner it does have a incorporated uh rail so i like that that's one of the reasons i like this one this is the 50 year anniversary as you can see i don't know why i haven't taken the sticker off but this is the 50 year anniversary and um you know nothing special but it it, it works great just like all 1022s do uh, the only problem is sometimes these magazines, when you put them in, they don't want to come out. Uh, especially, after, I gave it a little bit of a sanding. So let's see. So these are all working. But uh, sometimes it just doesn't want to come out. And you really have to, like, see, look. Those two fell out, no problem. So I don't know if it's the mag. So sometimes you just got to open it up and then push down from in here. So I've uh, sanded the polymer a bit. But I think it's just this this magazine um otherwise the thing is bulletproof man it just works uh again same same great trigger this one doesn't have the little dingus in the middle so i'm sure the actions are slightly different but you know um the only thing i i would change on this is the last shot hold open the remington version has a last shot hold open whereas this one doesn't and I, it's kind of annoying you know you're shooting especially with such a soft shooting round you're just plinking a long rapid fire and then you know you get you you don't realize it's done because uh the action closes on you and you, you think you have another round so this one's wearing just a uh i believe this is a two to seven yep two to seven ar bushnell ar optic so this is supposed to be for a rimfire ar um it has a shorter eye relief so that's why you could see it's pushed back a little bit more than this one is Great little optic, you know, for 150 bucks. Can't complain. It serves its purpose. And at two power, it's, um, you know, it's got a, a really good eye relief and, you know, it doesn't really distort. So I, I, I recommend this one just for plinking, you know, a little, to, uh, their AR series. And I believe they come in one to four, one to six, three to nine, three to 12, and two to seven for rimfire. So nice, nice little rifle. I put a uh, cheap little bipod on it and you know it, it it's accurate it has an adjustable cheek cheek riser um but not much else to say these these guns are really great for plinking and uh the reason i'm showcasing them today is like i said i can't take my ars out for a while 
So these bad boys are going to be getting a lot of use in the next two years, uh, unless something drastically changes in our favor. So I just want to show them to you. If you guys have any questions, these are going to be the ones that I'm using for the next little while. Uh, let me know once we get uh, this pandemic under control and the range open. I'll uh, put some some shooting videos in, but uh, great, great little rifles. Uh, highly recommend them. I, I've had Remingtons and I've had the Savage versions and by far the Rugers are the way to go. Um, I think uh, they're just a, a step up. The Savage, I really dislike the uh, the magazine, the way the magazine works. Uh, it's only until you start getting into some of the more expensive ones where they're a little bit better. But as far as, you know, this is just a, a $299, $1022 versus like, you know, the equivalent entry level Savage. I would choose this one all day long. Uh, you know, came with a little birdcage, flash hider, ghost rings, rail thrown in for $299. You can't beat that, guys. So... Let me know if you have any questions, uh, you know, uh, for the Canadian folks out there, get up on a CCFR's uh, Facebook page, share it, like it, um, you know, sign the petition, not that that's going to do anything. We really need to contact our, our MPs and uh, let them know that we're outraged and hopefully, hopefully there's a, a few politicians out there who, who take the fight and take the challenge to, to Justin. So guys, stay safe, uh, be responsible, don't get carried away with emotion. Um, if you are going to, you know, argue or comment on the current situation we're in, stay reasonable, stay uh, grounded, don't lose control, don't lose emotions, that's what they want. Uh, you take the high road and just speak logically, so... Uh, guys, hit me up if there's anything, but hope this video finds you well, and we'll talk soon.